Hi guys, George Glinski here from Toe the Line, joined today by Smudger Smith. Smudger, how you doing my man? Not so bad mate, just chilling. Till later on with pad work again and sparring and bag work. <laughs> same old, same old. Yeah, it's um a difficult fight coming in. A very interesting fight in Sean George, the main event of BKB Lockdown. How was this put to you by Jim Freeman? I just got a simple message. Uh, do you want to fight? Basically, for, well, more so, do you want to fight for the British title? And you know, they, they know that I'm well, that we're all here for the the title. So why not? Anyone that gets offered a title that refuses it is a bit um, a bit silly, really. It's an opportunity missed and, and passed, isn't it? But yeah, they said um, British title. Do you want to fight? I didn't ask who or you know when. Just said yeah, and then said Sean George in. Four weeks' time, and I'm like, well, yeah, let's get it on. Nice. And okay. I mean, I, I was motivated anyway, because obviously they say British title, but if it had said to me, Sean George, without the British title, I'd have still obviously accepted that fight. Yeah. So. Because it is, it's an interesting dynamic, because now you're fighting for the bantamweight British title, which your teammate and very close friend, Scott McHugh, was supposed to be fighting for. <laughs> yeah. With James Lilly. Is that awkward at all? Has he, have you discussed that with him? Yeah, he keeps throwing fucking insults at me. He's saying, every time I ring him, oh yeah, because you're fighting for that title I'm meant to be fighting for. Oh yeah, you took me spot on prize fighter and, and you, you didn't want to be a fight. I said, I, didn't, I never said they didn't want to fight on prize fighter. I said, uh, you know, if you want to fight on prize fighter, jump on. But he did say, I want to move make uh, move move out the way if he's sticking to the prize fighter because I know that you do well at uh, that weight division. So, you know, as always, me and Scott are very supportive of each other and, uh, and I told him that if he wants me not fuck out of him later, we can do that. Brilliant, brilliant. As nice. friends do. Because it's it's one of those fights where you've obviously got two guys very popular amongst the fans and, you know, two very good fighters at a very high level. But I was quite surprised because I, you don't really come into fights with a great deal of animosity, apart from Cuba Gavin, of course. Obviously, that fight is yet to happen. We won't yeah. discuss that just yet, but I did see in an article with Sean George that there was, he was pulling a sort of a revenge card, suggesting that you were <laughs> looking for revenge, as you call it, James Cullen. I, I don't know how he's looking at it. It's not really my fuss. Um, I ain't got a problem with Sean, and um, if Sean maybe thinks that, that's fine. If that's, the, uh, if that's the angle he's pushing, then I'm cool with that, not a problem at all. Um, I think, you know, the, the, the main thing here is just to know that Either way, we're getting in that ring and we're going to punch each other in the face, and and you know we're gonna we're gonna see who can get that title. Um, that for me is the main thing. I'm not asked about all this, you know, who said who said what and he said this and she said that. But um, I was in the corner for Liam Cullen, and it was probably one of the first major fights that I took note of. And um, and I did say after the fight that you know he's one of the guys that I would like to fight. Not on many occasions since and I give him full respect always check his hand always get a photo always catch a little bit of a conversation so you know this time we, we, we're going to war that conversation will still continue after the fight you know there's going to be no animosity there you know th- that's that's just it just, stand, just a standard pugilist legendary fight hopefully mm. it's safe to say there is no animosity everything's fine same as no you. no uh, you know like I say if that's, that's the angle that, that George is pushing that's fine by me it's not an issue um, I don't really have animosity towards other fighters except for you, like you said, you get you, but Gavin, who's I think is just a bit of a cocky cunt that needs a good, needs a good backhand. <laughs> so when that time comes, that time comes. I don't think we'll be fighting after after I've beaten him up in the prize fight final. I don't think we'll be fighting again. Mm. And that'll be him done at BKB. Is it frustrating because obviously you? Well, it must be. Where are we at now? A year since you yeah. lost the semi final. So you've been waiting for this. Final for a year now. I think it's like a year today, or was it seventeenth of November? I thought. I think it might be. It was yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, it might be yesterday. Yeah, so more or less a year to the day that we were. Uh, I fought against Lafitte, and that's the last time I fought. I mean, uh, Sean's fought since he fought in January, so he's a bit, li- a little bit less out of the ring than I am. Um, but you know that don't let that don't let that creep into my mind at all. I, I've been training throughout. I did have a bit of a rest. I think I'd had about six to eight weeks off before the fight was uh, was was put to me and and therefore I wasn't as prepared but that won't be an issue on the night you know that will get in there and you know regards to fitness um, or anything else that I've done during my four weeks training camp I know that my heart will get me through it 
I've been I've been in the fifth round before and I thought to myself, I wish I could have been a bit fitter. But I've got through the rounds and I've got through them comfortably. So it's not that's not that's not something that's playing on my mind. I'm gonna be ready on the night. Yeah. And it looks yeah. good training wise. Obviously Reese Murray down there, Scott McHugh, Matthew Hodgson, a lot of guys at Golden Team yeah. Golden Team fighters fighting on this next card. How has yeah. that process been surrounded with so many guys in the same situation doing in a fight camp? Well, um, it's been great because I, I said to uh, to Porrick, the the uh, head coach and owner of Golden Team, just the other night. You know, I said this is the first time you've probably done a training camp for just BKB fighters, which is something different for him and, and the gym and you know the team in general. Um, we've had Darius uh, Air come down and help us. I had another lad called um, uh, Cosmos, who's from Latvia as well as Darius is, and they've been helping out. We've had uh, O'Shea Davis, which is the um, brother of Johnny Collins uh, he's been helping us train doing some sparring getting some some work in um, and Scott McHugh obviously as you know is a bit of a floater he's like he's like the shit you push down the toilet don't want to go down <laughs> he floats around and does his own thing um, he does come, come at Golden Team and he's always welcomed with open arms and we're, we're more than happy to have him join us um, he's, he's not a Golden Team fighter but you know we, we'd like to look at him as uh, someone that does like to help us out and we like to help him He's kind of like a, if you just put in another analogy, I'd say he's probably like the stepchild you never really wanted, but you're happy, <laughs> happy, but you're happy to have him around. So, <laughs> so um, just give him a backhand every now and again and send him on his way. <laughs> but Scott's, Scott's one of those guys that just keeps the um, the, the fun flowing, the, the, the laughter, you know, when when you start getting down, you, you always look at Scott and does something stupid and everything's okay again. So, Bang on. What do you what do you make of his fight? Because obviously Will Kent hasn't actually been in BKB for quite some time. He has a lot of bare knuckle boxing experience, a bit of a journeyman on the mixed martial arts scene, a decent yeah. record. What do you think of his chances in that fight? I just think that Scott's improved a hell of a lot more. His head movement's better. His shots, his shot selections are a hell of a lot better as well. And his his hands, you know, I don't think people really realise just how fast Scott's hands are because he hits with such with such speed and ferocity, and and when he hits you, he does hurt. I mean, with gloves on, he hurts. We we sometimes spar with MMA gloves on, and as you can imagine, the speedy hands without you know eights, tens, twelves, or even fourteen ounce gloves on are a lot faster. Um, so I I know my warning to Will Cairns is, you know, try and stay away because you know try and try and keep him on the edge on the outside because as soon as he gets on the inside and starts throwing the mucks in. You've had it, um, but then that advice, you know, with Scott, he's, he's he's quite an unpredictable fighter. So any advice given to his opponent probably won't help him out because <laughs> he can tell Scott what to do in the corner, and yet within minutes he'll go out there and do exactly the opposite. Yeah, like like a good stepchild does. So <laughs> so um, yeah. It's been, it's been entertaining this last four weeks. You know, well, this last three weeks. We've got another week to go. Uh, we're all going to be in the bubble um, for, the, for 24 hours before the fight. Well, more than 24 hours. So that's going to be quite entertaining. I'm sure we'll get a few videos up for the fans. We always have a bit of a laugh. So, yeah. How do you think that dynamic's going to be? Because obviously no one, I'm not sure... If you've been, I mean, I think you've been to shows during the lockdown period. You've you've experienced them, but you haven't obviously fought on them yet. How do you think that dynamic is going to affect the, the atmosphere? I don't know. I've been thinking about this a lot, you know, but not having the fans there and stuff. And and I've fought in places when there haven't been that many fans before. As a lot of fights probably have when it's been a bit of a shit crowd and you've just had to get on with it. Yeah. Um. You know, we've all we've all boxed at lower levels, but fighting when there's no crowd at absolutely at all. Is is a quite a daunting experience, I think, and I don't, I don't, I'm not worried about the fight. I'm just, I'm just wondering how I'll react to, um, you know, like normally you jump on the ring or you know you you celebrate to the crowd or you know you you get the crowd to get your back, your back, and you 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 know try to entice it and move forward and and motivate you when you hear the crowd screaming. And obviously you're not going to have that this time around, so it's a case of the motivation has to come from within. You know, there's none of that out, out, outside uh, influence by your cornerman, so um, it's going to be quite a weird experience, but I'm sure the majority of the fighters will get through it. There might be a few fighters here and there that, that might find it more difficult, but like I say, I've fought in, I've fought in small complexes before, and I've fought in yards and stuff, and 
with a few people. Shouldn't be an issue, really. A fight's a fight. And I think once you're in the moment and once you took a shot and give a shot, I don't mean it really matters. Sometimes you don't even hear the crowd at all. I think that's what it's going to be like. You know, you're going to be, you're going to be so warned into um, what's going on in the ring. It doesn't really matter what's going on outside. However, you're going to hear a lot of fucking talking. You're going to hear, you're going to hear, obviously during the fight, you're going to hear people say stuff and you're going to hear the, 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 the cracks and the thuds of the shots, which I'm really, really excited about that part. Really excited. You know, looking back at the video, if you had a, re- a replay of a video, and you can, you know, you can hear a certain shot that's landed so sweet. It's mental, isn't it? So, yeah, I can't wait. And you've got more sponsors than an F1 team. So, if you want to list those off for the final part. <laughs> then that, is, that, is that the final, final part? You cut me off this early. Mate, we could have been talking about conspiracies and all sorts. Mate, <laughs> somewhere. We're not in cons- they're only conspiracies if there's no evidence. <laughs> Just remember that. All right? There's a lot, there's a lot going on. Yeah, just can I just put put out there to the fans and the friends? Um, my I've been shadow banned on Instagram. If you put my name in, if you put my name in. I swear to God, if you put my name in uh, to Instagram. You have to put the full thing because if you don't, I'm right at the very bottom on the list. You know, for 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 the name search oh. and uh, and my feed, my my feed doesn't get shown to everyone anymore. So if you want to see what I've, what I've been getting up to just lately, type in the full thing, smudger, BKB, one word. And then my Facebook, my band's up tomorrow what day after. And, uh, and my new Facebook, my restriction, not ban, not a warning, no nothing, just restriction. My restriction's up probably the same time because I think the Fathom, they're both the same account. They're bastards. Yeah, so just spreading the word about corona and vaccines and stuff. Do not take the vaccine, people. Sinister. Um, as for sponsors, yeah, um, I'll show you now. We've got. <laughs> I know. This is uh, what I was trying to avoid. <laughs> yeah, so listen, we've got sponsors there. We've got another sponsor that's not on there at the moment, and it's uh, DH um, DH Crane Liftings or DH Liftings, which is a very close friend of the family, and he's been very helpful over this camp, uh, this training camp. And then I've got my uh, nephew on the back, Josh. Um, the guy who, uh, who killed him in a car accident has actually just admitted, um, not admitted, sorry, being charged with death by dangerous driving. So that's a bonus for our family. And moving towards this fight, you know, that's that's a, a massive positive, uh, positivity, a bit of positivity moving towards the fight. But it went you know, one step further, t- uh, closer to um, to getting some sort of some sort of conclusion, and uh, you know, and and and. To have someone be paid to pay the price for what's happened. So, uh, yeah. Other than that, mate, everything's good. Training tonight. Um, getting a getting a bit of a pad work in tonight and a, a few more tactics towards um, how we're going to win. And that's us done. Food's good. Weight's on point, seventy two point five. So I'm within the uh, the designated weight division. Good. Feeling strong. Feeling fit. Feeling ready. Perfect. Well, smudge it. Thanks for your time. No, isn't it? No, isn't it? Look out for Johnny Collins when he gets his fight. Look out for Johnny Collins. We've got the other two lads that are fighting at the moment. We've got Reese Murray, he's got his debut. Matt Hodgson for his second fight and Scott McHugh for his fifth. We've got some good lads coming from Leeds, so Leeds is getting on the map. And that's what I want to do for this fight. I want to make sure that I put Leeds on the map. We we need to make sure that we bring some sort of, you know, some sort of um, title back at some point. And I think this needs to be the start of it. Thank you very much. Right. To all the BKB fans and friends and uh, to the people of Leeds, all the best. Where are you?